But without further ado, I'm going to bring in my guest for the day, Miss Patrice Moore. Um, if you are in Mount Vernon, you know this woman. She's involved in everything. She, um, I think, um, Women's Demand Action, I think I've seen her involved with them and several other organizations. She does so much work and she founded a women's a girl basketball team, um, the Shamrocks. And we're going to bring her in to talk about that. Welcome to the show, Miss Patrice Moore. Thank you so much for having me, AJ Woodson at Mr. AJ Woodson. <laughs> And, and also, you know, one of the things we highlight on Black Westchester is Black love. And yes. you and your husband just celebrated your, I'm not sure what anniversary, but y'all been together forever. 39. Yep. 39 years. That's a whole lot of time. There's a whole lot of us. <laughs> we've, been in, we've been involved for 39 <laughs> years of anything. So, you know, that's, that's a whole that's lot of love. So, so, <laughs> shout out to your husband, uh, Lowe's Moore. Um, Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, former NBA yes. basketball player, and he's done so much with the Boys Club and so many other things. And make sure you check out their podcast, The Blueprint. Did I say it right? Yeah, Lowe's More, the, Lowe's More, the Blueprint podcast. Yes, yeah, it comes on every Sunday. Well, I don't know, every Sunday, but come on Sundays. Uh, every Sunday at 7 p.m. Every Sunday at 7 p.m. So, yeah. If it's not a Sunday, it's only because we have something special. Like we never try to do Super Bowl Sunday. Right, you know, right, right, um, right, right. If, if, if the holiday is on a Sunday, right. you know, we do something different. So I give you some of y'all permission to go. Some, some of y'all, not everybody, go at seven o'clock and check out their show too. <laughs> you know, but don't everybody leave yeah, though. Yeah. We, 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 no, 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 no. We, we try yeah. to. So some of y'all. You know, sometimes you know, I learned. I've learned how to multitask. So sometimes I have one show on here, one show right. on here. So what I, so what I need you know, to I want to make sure that I get you some looks. You right, know? right. So I need some of y'all to go this week and then some of y'all y'all go next week and some of y'all wait two more weeks and then y'all go. So, you know, but um, yes. No, you know what they got to do, AJ? They got to put up two. Listen, we. I got, that's what I do. I have two computers up. I got one AJ oh, and one blueprint. Okay. I have to do the blueprint background, but I keep it real. Okay, no doubt. That's what's up. That's what's up because y'all had me on recently. And I was like, yeah, I see you have so and so on. And he was commenting on the guest that was on and as I was leaving. Yes. So that's what's up. <laughs> so tell us. So I believe, I don't know the whole story, but I believe the Shamrocks is inspired by the death of Shamoya McKenzie. And do I have that right? And if so, um, let's, start here. Right. Let's, let's start there. Well, so Marsha Blunt, who is going to come on the show, I already uh, confirmed, so she'll be on at the, um, at the latter part of the show. Um, so in 2017, um, Marsha Blunt called me up. It was around January, uh, February. And she said, would you be interested in uh, putting a women's professional basketball team in Mount Vernon? And I said, um, yeah, no, <laughs> I've got so much on my plate. This is too much for me to do. And I, and I just, I just can't do it. And on December 31st, 2016, um, Shamoya's life had been uh, taken through gun violence, uh, right on third street in Mount Vernon. And to be honest with you, I had only met Shamoya maybe once when she probably was in seventh grade or somewhere. She was younger, and I was coaching it at the time at Mount Vernon High School. Um, I coached right up until probably 2013, so I knew a lot of the kids who were um, who were coming up. And the day that she had uh, gotten shot, it was the same day that uh, uh, Coach uh, Erica had um, said she wanted her to come. I think it was Erica or it might have been um, the other coach that they were going to bring her up to varsity. And she didn't want to go to practice for the varsity practice the same day because she had just finished JV practice. And as she was leaving or they were going somewhere, she was shot. And it was just devastating. It, it really... Um, upset the community. And it was an opportunity for me to kind of get back involved the next day as I'm also a licensed clinical social worker. So I gathered as many friends as I could to, um, to provide a counseling session for the team uh, and just really work with them during that process. And I immediately got connected to Nadine McKenzie, who is to me an absolutely phenomenal woman. Yes. 
And so I decided that she had asked me to be part of the Shamoya McKinsey Foundation, which was to raise money to help um, to prevent violence. So as a result, Moms Demand Action connected, and that's, uh, of course, they really do um, a lot with uh, anti-gun um, uh, um, you know, law, you know, dealing with anti-gun laws and, and, and gun violence. And so we started to really work together, uh, Mimi Rokar uh, at the time, and there were a lot of people that got involved. So as a result, um, we were at a meeting one day and I became the chaplain um, for, the, um, for the group. And while I was at a meeting one day, Coach Dave Newton says, man, I miss my shamrock. Now, remember, I had already told Marsha, absolutely not. I'm not doing this. You must have lost your mind. And the minute I heard Shamrock, it was like a light bulb just went. A light bulb of inspiration, just a light bulb. And I turned around and called Marsha when I got home. I said, I'm in. She goes, what? I said, yeah, I'm in. I want the team and I want it to be called the Mount Vernon Shamrocks. And I want it in honor of Shamoya McKenzie. And Shamoya was, is West, was West Indian and Jamaican. And so I said, and I want the, the team colors to be the colors of the Jamaican flag. So even though we were shamrocks, right, I wanted Jamaican flag colors for my team. So that's our team jerseys or Jamaican flag colors. And we um, needed a place to play. So at the time, my husband was the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club and uh, Mel Campos, chief professional officer. I went to them. We hit them with a proposal of how much would it cost to rent the club. And they gave us some space. And we started that, that year in 2017 playing um, uh, at, out of the Boys and Girls Club of Mount Vernon. And our first year, we did well. But yeah, it was named after Shamoya McKenzie. Um, our logo, as you see up here, it says um, there's the number 30 is in the middle of it. And that is the Shamoya's favorite number. The red, white, and blue balls, it says WABA because we're part of the Women's American Basketball Association. And I'll let Marsha tell you a little bit more about that later. But just as a, a nutshell, uh, you have the WNBA and when the ladies don't make the team, a lot of them just sit around or they play different places. So Marsha developed the WABA for a place for the young ladies to play. And the goal was to have them get looks to go overseas. So we had an overseas contract of somebody that would live stream so that they could see the girls playing and pick up the players. So you could start out with a certain amount of players and get to the playoffs and have people missing because they got picked up. So three of my players this year have gotten picked up already and are gone overseas. And that's what the whole you know, uh, in inspiration of the WABA was about. And that's also the reason why the Shamrocks came in because of Shimon McKinsey. And a couple of things. So you brought up a couple of things. One, I want to um, commend you for the work you did, because one of the things I say, our children, especially in the black community, but especially in Mount Vernon, when they have traumatic incident after traumatic incident after traumatic incident, they are never afforded an opportunity to unpack. Um, yes. And so you take you're going from one traumatic incident to another to another, and then sometimes it spills out to you know one of the last incidents that happened with with, with, with Kayla Green, you know what I mean, in, in, yes. the, in the streets, yes. um, which you know um, was very traumatic. Um, I so I, I definitely want to commend you on that because we need more places and more people to help our young people unpack their trauma. Um, because you can't keep that in. As an adult, you can't keep that in, you know, traumatic right. incidences. As a child, you're trying to figure it out. And you got all this stuff going in. And, you know, before that, a month or so before that, it was a drive-by shooting at school, blah, blah, blah. And this, a couple other incidences. And, you know, they never healed from any of those. And then they had this that rocked the city. So I definitely want to come in. Years, years ago, years ago, many, many years ago, I want to say it was in 19, it was in the 90s. Um, Columbine happened. I think it was like April 20th and it was either was early 2000. And I remember Bill Clinton was prince, was president at the time. And he said, this was a wake up call. And I said, I've been woke. I don't know what you're talking about. I've been woke. And, and, the, and the reality is for me, I've been, pre, I've been speaking. I used to go around um, pretty much around the country and talk about adolescent violence and the impact. Um, you know, I used to talk about it and I used to do a presentation um, about it, um, dealing with adolescent violence from an eclectic perspective. Mm. And, and what I meant by that is we have a tendency to think that we got the right answer. And, and that we, that what what I know is better than what somebody else knows, and that's not necessarily the case. In in reality, 
Um, there are a lot of different ways to deal with this. And if you get stuck in thinking your way is right, we'll never get to the answer. We all have some ideas that we should bring together and try to help with our young people. Um, young people live what they what they learn. And so if you look out right now in the, in the world, violence is happening. You got Russia and Ukraine. You've got, you know, these people. Every, it's the kids are, we want to get all jacked up over the kids. And we got to get these adults right because the adults aren't right mm -hmm. you know we we go after each other for for some things and then we wonder why our kids are acting up but it, we've got to you know we've got to do better um as adults and so my goal is really to try to uh, assist people in processing their information in their language and tell you to, to be honest with you aj this pandemic has made it worse yes and and so what has happened with the the young people is that the more you become desensitized to real people and become uh, oversensitized to uh, social media, uh, you don't have any connection. Uh, remember when we were growing up and we show our age, I'm gonna show my age right now. And I'm, I'm not ashamed of my age. But when we grew up and we played video games, there were things like Pac-Man, right? You know, maybe Super Mario, you know, different things like that. that. That's, that's before my time. That's before my time. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and in those and in those things, but it never showed blood. Right. Right. You didn't have things that were blowing people's heads off, you know, and and shooting people, and then like blood splurting out. So after a while, our you know when you're we're seeing Mortal Kombat and some of the things that our young people are playing on video games. Now, all of a sudden, they're out in the street and somebody's actually really getting shot and blood is splurting out. There is a connect or a disconnect. And so, you know, to me, you know, I was able to, to really get past violence and anger through basketball. Mm -hmm. Basketball was therapy for me. Mm -hmm. And so when I would have a moment where I was really upset or I would go off or wanted to go off, I'd go on the basketball court and i play. Mm -hmm. I played hard. You know, we were good, but I channeled some of my emotions on the court. Mm -hmm. If you don't have enough for the young people to do, they won't have a place to channel this energy. And I think that's really important. So even though my team is a woman's team, it's not necessarily girls because I've got women on the team that are in their 30s, you know, in their 30s, you know, 30. Four, thirty-five. I mean, they're playing, you know, and some of them are just oh, I coming these from were just girls. No, this is women. Okay, because, because you can't, you Brenda can't play. At the, a boys club, and it was just girls, and y'all playing a girls. Team. No, it was women. They were, they were girls, but they women. They're in there. They're 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 probably they can be anywhere from eighteen to pretty much 35, 40, uh -huh. You know, if they want to play. So, um, the most of them are people that are out of college, mm -hmm. um, and are looking to go overseas or have been overseas and are, you know, didn't play for the WNBA, so they need to stay in shape until they go back into their overseas contract. Now, now um, uh, quickly, I want to segue into the other thing that I said came to mind while you were talking, um, before I get back into the Shamrocks, um, Brittany Griner and the whole situation that the, the women get paid so much less than the men that she actually had to go play in Russia in the off season because they pay more. Um, right. you know, I, that's, you know, we talk about all this, you hear, you hear all this about equality and, 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 and equal rights and, 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 and all that, you know, it's a shame, um, you know, that she had to do that. It's a shame that that was a situation. Cause I mean, from what I heard and heard from her and her teammates and her wife, that's why she would go over there because they paid more. So in the off season, she would go over there. And so it, it was it was so interestingly enough he, I'm going to say this is going to sound crazy but the WNBA was actually her off season. Okay. If you're getting paid more money in Russia, your off season is actually when you're here. Oh well, yes, <laughs> right? you're, you're right. The, right. Right. No, no, you know? that's right. And so you know, so the reality is you going to these countries and it, it may not necessarily be that you're paying so much more but you don't pay taxes. Okay. Right. And so you're bringing that money and there might be a duty tax or some type of tax when you get back to the, the to the states. Uh, the reality, is, I don't think Russia was her was first time playing in Russia. No, she had played this um, a few think, times. She, 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 yeah. 
So this was a this was clearly a political situation. Um, you know, Russia is going, you know, having a battle with Ukraine, and the United States has been very vocal about Russia being uh, be, this being an inappropriate war. And so, what greater message would Russia be able to pull their political power than to take one of the best players in the United States and put her behind bars right. for um, for oil um, that you know, is legal in the United States, not legal in Russia, you know, and so she ended up being in jail and they want to talk about nine years because what they want to do is trade a political pawn to get um, somebody out of jail that we're holding here for war crimes, mm -hmm. right? And bring them over there for somebody who had uh, some marijuana oil. That is, you know, she got caught up in that situation. And I hope and this is my hope. I know Russia's throwing the money at the people, but no one from our country should go and play in Russia at right. all. We should prepare our players for the Olympics. And if by our chance we play against Russia, we should beat them 175 to two. Right, right, right. <laughs> now, but, you know, and the, and the point that I was making, it's a shame that she even had to be there. If, if, yes. if, if, if we paid our the WNBA players better, there might have been less of a need to then go out and play to make more money. Well, we have to support the WNBA. No, no, no. We, so we have to. I want to get there too. Me. Yes, I want to get there too. Yeah, we, mm -hmm. we, we we have to support these these entities, and and you know we should. This should be a teaching moment and a learning situation, and we should from this point seriously be supporting the WNBA. When my my daughter, she's thirty three now, when she was young and she was in high junior high school, or whatever. She was on whatever basketball team they had um, in Long Island. She lived in Brentwood, Long Island at the time. Um, and, um, you know, she her team went undefeated that year. So, you know, I tried to reinforce everything. I got her the movie um, Love and Basketball had just came out, showing her how yeah, hard, okay. even though you're good, the, how hard, the hard work the Shania Latham character had, the work she had to put mm. in to, to make it. And yeah. the WNBA just came out, just started. And uh, one of my friends was doing um, PR for it. So I got her, we got tickets, and she got to get to actually meet the players. So I was trying to reinforce, you know, what she wanted to do. Next year, her mother introduced her to, to the fake nails and basketball was out. And I, I, I not. But I mean, but, but, you know, I was trying to reinforce <laughs> that. <laughs> but, but, you, you know, know so that, basketball, you know, basketball can do this somewhat. I, I remember many years ago when I was playing, after I had graduated college, mm -hmm. I, my, my oldest daughter was, I think, uh, five or six, and my youngest daughter was four, and I was playing in a summer league and this girl and I butted heads and she split my head open. I had like stitches and I laid down on the ground and I looked up at Lowe's. I said, I'm growing my hair long. I'm growing my nails long. I'm having another baby and I ain't never playing this game. Again. <laughs> so you tell your daughter, I was, it took me a long time to get there, but I know what she means. Well, yeah, so no mom introduced her to long nails and fake nails. I'm like, yo, you can't get no college, college uh, scholarship on fake nails. I was just like, you know, and she loved this. This wasn't something that I was forcing on her. What I was trying to do was reinforce, but I got, she got to meet the, the players and they, they talked to her and, yeah. you know, I got, you know, I got to interview a few of them and I told them that she wanted to play and, you know, they gave her advice and the whole nine. So, you know, it was a beautiful thing. And I used to take her to some of the games. That's what we were talking about supporting, yeah. you know, it just started, yeah. you know, um, I, I used to take her to the game. So I, I can't say that I have watched a lot of the games since then. Either like I did in the beginning. I, I, I'm Liberty, a big I to, watcher. I used to watch all. I'm a big watcher. I used to. Mm -hmm. I used to. My, I used to support the Liberty. I'm a Nick fan, so I used to support the Liberty. First couple when years. they were in Westchester. No, well, when they were in when they were at County Center. But no, just just watch them. Just no. But when I okay. um, I think they were at the um Garden when um. They were at the garden first, right? Then they went to the county center. They were at the garden, then they went to county right. center. At the, when they were at the garden, the that's when that's where I took my daughter. That's where I used to support them and mm -hmm. go to some of the games. Um, I never got to go to the county center games, so um, I don't know why. But um, well, we're hoping that next year that you know, uh, you know that we're hoping to come. First of all, we're on our way to the championship. Um, our final four for the for the WABA championship is this weekend coming up. 
On Friday night is the semifinals, and we're playing against Midwest Sound. Uh, I believe they're from Michigan area, uh -huh. uh, Missouri somewhere. And it, we, they're number th we're, they're ranked number three. We're ranked number two. And then Atlanta is number one, and they play against D.C. And so the winner of those two will play the championship game on Saturday. Um, so we're hoping that, you know, we find ourselves in the chip on, on Saturday. We have a very strong team, probably the best team I've fielded yet. Um, uh, we have uh, quite a few young ladies. Um, Nikki Avery, who has been overseas before. Nadia Duncan from Mount Vernon High School. She played for me. Um, Nazarene, that's nice, that's nice. Daughter. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's, daughter. That's, yeah, that's her daughter. Yes, yes. Yeah, she's a beast. She's a beast on the board. You know, we've had Renee Taylor. We've had Alyssa Lawrence. Um, you know, we have some really strong players. Our coach is uh, Coach Edwin. Um, they call him Coach Munch. He's out of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And he ca he called, um, he, Nadia's been playing with him for years. And he called uh, Nadia and said, you know, I want to get our team into the WABA. Uh, do you mind if I, he, he called me up. He said, do you mind if we bring the whole team? And I said, sure. And so their team is called No Limit. And so that's why you see No Limit in the logo a little bit there, because we're now Shamrock's No Limit and because of Coach Munch. But I need to correct something that you said at the beginning. The team, even though I, w I came up with the idea and the name, Mia Williamson, who was a, was, grew up in the projects in Mount Vernon, um, she, it was in, in the initial ownership, it was Mia Williamson, myself, and Crystal Dorsey Dames. Crystal Dorsey also played at Mount Vernon High School in the girls' basketball team. And then about a year and a half, two years later, my sister, Deirdre Wallace Hines, joined in Hines joined in in the ownership. So Mia, you know, due to medical problems, you know, had to back out. But Crystal, my sister Deirdre, and myself are still the majority owners of um, the Mount Vernon Shamrocks. Michael Hammett, I'm not sure if you remember no Mike, but Mike is our president, our team president, and he handles all of our game day experiences. And we still play out of the Boys and Girls Club. We this year um, we didn't play as many games, and our season started a little sooner. Um, but next year, we're looking forward to really, you know, doing great and marvelous things, you know, and you talked about money. We have not, this has not been a business venture. Let me just be clear. This has been a venture to help young, help these young women possibly get contracts to bring some good, you know, things into our community. And so we're hoping that as we get into 2020, we, that we win the championship. And as we go into 2020 three that will have a lot of energy and fire um, for people wanting to come out and join. So I want to say Moms Demand Action has been an amazing support for us with Nadine McKenzie, Miss Carolyn Waters, Miss G Ms. Wazuski from the high school. You know, these folks have come out and have been there for just about every home game. Caitlin Gleason um, has been there, you know, uh, uh, Mayor Mayor Howard has been there. Brenda Crook. That's why I went. Oh my At goodness. the games I went to. That's, Brenda, that's is my, Brenda is my girl. Yes. She she will show up and show out. And so we're looking forward to going down to Greensboro this weekend and having a great, a great, great successful experience. So when we were talking about, you know, we got to support the WNBA, you know, everything is local. How can we support the Shamrocks? One, one, you already said they play at the Boys boys and Girls Club so that we know where they play. Um, how often do they play? When are their games? What can people do to get involved, to help, uh, or to support, or anything like that? So so when we so I, we won't have games again until next year. I'm mm -hmm. going to bring the girls back in and probably have an event and have them participate in something in the community, come to the one of the Mount Vernon High School girls basketball teams. Right now, like when we start getting into the season, we need people to do video. We need people to do um, help us with game day setups, you know, things like that. You know, these things that maybe getting a college intern who's looking to do sports, you know, reporting, sports announcing um, to get involved. And so we really want to get that because that helps us, you know, to defray costs because financially we're just basically coming out of pocket. You know, I pay, my sister pays and Crystal pays and we just drop money in and whatever we, whatever our costs are, we, we're just eating it. We don't necessarily have the full business structure, like as we go down to, to Greensboro this week, we're basically paying out of pocket to get these girls, you know, down to get our team down to um to green to Greensboro. So, so you'll, and you'll, it's a lot. You'll, you'll accept donations for those who are watching and will be watching 
And if someone wanted to just donate some money, how would they do that? Is that possible? Well, if they donate it right now, I would say is if they have a cash app, they could send it to um, PWMore63 at, uh, at Cash App. Dollar sign PW more sixty three. That's a designated account. That's for the Shamrocks. Okay. That's a designated account. So it's cash. It's dollar sign P W more M O O R E sixty three, and that goes into account. That's des I did a, a, a one of those popcorn. What is it? The double good popcorn right, fundraisers. Right, right. I have that. I have that. If you go, you know, I'm going to put the link onto my page and. I know it's just popcorn, but them popcorn things have been raising a lot right. of money. And I want you to send me all those links too. So when I put this on the show, when I edit this, just this part that you're on and I put it on, on Black Westchester, mm -hmm. I can have the links under mm -hmm. there. Um, you spoke about Marsha uh, Blount. Is that her Blount? That's her? Marsha Blount. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want you to introduce her. She's here. Okay. Awesome. So. I want to introduce you to Marsha Blunt. Marsha Blunt is the founder of the Women's American Basketball Association. She's also the first female to own a men's professional basketball team in the American Basketball Association. Uh, and so Marsha is a graduate of Mount Vernon High School. She won the Mount Vernon High School State Basketball Championship with me in 1981. Mm. She was the most valuable player uh, of the tournament with 28 points and I think 14 assists in the final game of her career, uh, played at Queens College, just an amazing person. She's always got vision and ideas, and she has really brought this league from seven teams to, as she can tell you, I think 22 or something like that. So, you know, I want to introduce you to Mount Vernon, Mount Vernon, New York's finest out of the projects, but she's not a project. She's a <laughs> success story, Marsha Blunt. I, before you say that, so 81, so we actually were in school together because I actually came back. I was living in Long Island from seven to 14. My parents got divorced and mm -hmm. I drove my mother crazy and she sent me back to daddy. So, uh, <laughs> so, so I was I was in Mount Vernon High, High School from 10th, 10th grade on in 81. So um, yeah, we were actually briefly in school together. But um, welcome right. to the we show. We win the chip that year. <laughs> welcome to the show, Marcia. Thank you. I mean, what an introduction. I can just, I, I mean, <laughs> I'm I'm happy. I, I tell we joke about this all the time. This is her introduction, and I love my sister because uh, we just feel that way about each other. We did it together. We made history together, and I'm so proud of my Mount Vernon High School roots. How how oh um uh um Sean Mad Mayor Sean Patterson how is it the living legend Patrice uh, Wallace Moore? She just she just put <laughs> that in the comment section. Um, I love her. Um, a side note, since I both of y'all, both Mount Vernon residents, Mount Vernon High School um, 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 alumni, how did you feel about hearing about Memorial Field opening up this weekend and the first game being played this weekend? Tears. Aww. It was tears for me, but I was, unfortunately for me, I missed it. My 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 um, my father's sister passed away and I was actually doing her eulogy around that time, um, but I wanted to be there. But just the energy was amazing for our city. And so shout out to all who made it possible from the previous administrations to Absolutely. our mayor who, you know, did it today, did it yesterday to all those um, legislators, you know, the county exec, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody who put their hand in it, you know, it's this, nothing like this can be done by, by one person. Right. And so congratulations to all. Right. What was what, and to Mount Vernon for winning? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. So, what, what were your thoughts when you heard? I don't know if you were there, Marsha, but when you heard that there was a ribbon cutting and then the first game since two thousand seven. Oh my goodness! Wow, that's ex first of all, it's, it's exciting. Um, Trees expressed it beautifully. Um, it's so proud, like Mount Vernon, the tradition that we have. Um, and I, I got a chance to meet the mayor. She came to. Uh, one of the Shamrock games, and I got a chance to meet her. See her comment, Marsha Blount ain't no joke either. She, that's the man. <laughs> <laughs> that that's just love and support, and I and I love it. I love it. So, but uh, it's exciting. Yeah. Now tell us about you, and so you were the first female to own a men's professional. Basketball. To talk about that for a minute. That's just, I just I, that needs some highlight. That needs some spotlight on that. Just so I tell you, I, I could just Trees is Trees is uh, 
what a hype woman, right? When your sister, <laughs> right, introduces you like that. Um, <laughs> yes, in 2005, um, I was fortunate enough to obtain the, uh, at that time, it was the Newark Express and the ABA, the famed ABA, the red, white, and blue, where Dr. J came from. And so in 2005, you know, I thank God, but I was I was the first female um, and African American female at that to own a men's professional basketball team. Um, now, now, and then a little history. So now, and this is because I don't know, and this is how I learned. I learned something with every interview and everything. Right, right. So I know there was an ABA and there was an NBA, and at some point they joined together. So when right. there, there was an ABA independent of that. Of, of well, the, okay. That's a very good question. So what happened was um, the ABA uh, was one of the was the original league, is what mm -hmm. I say. And then there was the NBA, but the NBA had the financial backing, and so they took in several of the ABA teams. And then the the deal was there would be a, a twenty five year moratorium on the ABA kind of stepping away and shutting down for twenty five years. Ah. So twenty five years later. The original founders brought the league back. So now the ABA is in its 23rd year of being back in the league. And I have had my team in the league for 18 seasons. Now, I am so currently I, the longest running team in the ABA. A lot of people don't know that because I did not know that. And, yes. I, and I think of myself somewhat as informed. And right, <laughs> I did, right, I, right. And I'm a big NBA fan, and I did not know that. So Yes, I, yes. So, you know. So what, is, team, what is your team? What is your team called? Uh, the Garden State Warriors. We okay, were. You, they play in Jersey? Garden we State. We play in New Jersey in Essex County. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, but um, if anyone's interested, it's uh, the real ABA league.org. If you, they want to go on and just you know, um, review the, and, and, and really just find a team in the area because there's over, my understanding is there's over 150 teams in the ABA currently. Okay. The real, a, the real ABA, a the real ABA league. League. Yes. Okay. Dot org. I just want to put that on the screen for everybody um, to see it. Yes, yes, yes. So, now you, um, um, Patrice was uh, Miss Patrice was sharing with us. Um, you contacted her about um, uh, bringing an ABA team to Mount Vernon or something like that. Uh, just share that story, uh, you know, before she did the well, Shamrocks. Well, um, well, bef before the Shamrocks, um, you know, uh, being a part of the ABA, I've always kind of talked to or or kind of threw hints out to both Patrice and Lowe's about right. bringing a, a men's team because home is home, right? Right, right, home, right, right, absolutely. Right? And, uh, and uh, you know, for, for whatever reason, it has not happened uh, as of yet. Uh, and uh, and then I had the opportunity to start the, AB, the WABA, uh, mm -hmm. which really is the sister league to the ABA. Mm -hmm. And uh, Therese tells a funny story about when I contacted her, when I decided to start the league and I contacted Patrice, of course, home was almost number one on my list. Let me contact my sister, Patrice. And uh, she wanted no parts of it. <laughs> she, yeah, she, she said that. She, she said wanted that. no parts of it. Yes. <laughs> it was like, yay, sis, but no. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, I say, look at God. Look how things, you know, uh, turned out. And... Um, for whatever the reason, you know, there were reasons why uh, the Shamrocks exist. We're proud of the reasons why and the dedication for the naming of the Shamrocks. And uh, we're here uh, six years later, and um, Therese will be taking the Shamrocks to the uh, national final four for the league with an opportunity to bring the first. Therese, uh, Therese Dee Dee, and Crystal. Therese, Dee Dee, and Crystal, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, the goal is to to bring you know the first title um, to to Mount Vernon, something that, else for us to celebrate. That's beautiful. Now, now, just like I didn't know that ABA was back, um, many of us did not know there was a WABA. Yes. So and something else did, I just something else I'm just learning now. Look at so. that beautiful. See? So let me give you that website address. It's uh, okay. it's it's simple. It's 
womensaba.com. Womensaba.com. Okay. Yes. So, so talk about starting the, the, with the, the, the WABA, what it does. I know Patrice sure. talked a little bit about it, you know, um, helping develop players um, that might not make it in the WNBA to, you know, play overseas and, and et cetera, yes. et cetera. And yeah. So tell us a little bit about that. So, you know, obviously I have a history uh, on the men's side and, and I love, um, I love my men's team. I love what we do. But I also wanted that for the women. You know, I have a history with, in women's basketball, obviously, you know, um, and I saw a need. Um, we, we love support the WNBA, um, but there are limited opportunities, right? There are only 12 teams still to this day, 20 some odd years later. And um, I saw an opportunity and, and started the league, made some phone calls to um, some people to, to help support the league. Um, and what the motto is, is to provide opportunities for players post-college to continue their careers. Um, and I say that because you have some players that are still looking to go overseas or to the WNBA, which we have, um, proudly, uh, been able to help support. We've had some players to get WNBA opportunities. Um, we have probably over 70 players that have gone overseas um, from being a part of the WABA. So we know that we we have a, a, a real product that is being uh, respected, viewed, and players are getting opportunities after, you know, from playing in the WABA. Um, and the Mount Vernon Shamrocks, they, there are several team players, excuse me, over the years that have played in the league and have received opportunities overseas. Um, so we hope to continue that tradition. We we talked um, briefly before you got on, um, you know, the Brittany Griner situation, and it's a shame that that the WNBA gets paid considerably less than the W than the NBA. And I know yes. attendance and all of that. Yeah. And yeah. I don't think the same building up of the WNBA went into the same support and the same thing that goes into the the NBA. You know what I'm saying? I, I just don't think they correct. So correct. you know, you you need that support, and then you Absolutely. know, you need the people. Absolutely. So so. So it, I, my whole thing is it was a shame that Brittany had to go to Russia. You know what I'm saying? When she wasn't playing and, here. And because, that's the key. Because, because it was paying more. And you know what I'm saying? And it was just, it's a shame that financially she had to, she had to feel like she had to go over there and then, you know, to be used as a political pawn now. You know what I'm saying? Like she shouldn't have, we, should, we, we shouldn't have had a situation where she should have had to go in the first place. That is the most important part right there. You know, that that is the most important part. The fact that, so many of the best players in the world play in the WNBA. They should mm -hmm. not have to subsidize their income by playing overseas and overseas paying them um, sometimes three to four times as, as much as their WNBA salary when the WNBA is the league. Um, yeah. So, you know, it, it's just a shame. Um, so we won't get into the politics of it. Right, right, but right, right. I, we, we obviously believe that, you know, there is, um, um, she's high profile. She's played in Russia right. for so many years. Right, right. Um, so it's it's a little mind boggling, you know, why they would detain her like this for this, uh, right. for this period. And, and it's just a polit all politics. And um, Patrice, do you have a show tonight? Yes, I'm actually getting ready to roll into the show, so I, know, I need to I know go. You, I know so I, wanted to get, so I wanted to give you last words if you wanted to, and Marcia, please stay. I sure. First of all, I, I, want to, I want to say thank you, AJ, for inviting uh, inviting um, me on to talk about the Shamrocks and continue to do the great work you do of uh, bringing the message because people need to hear the message. So thank you because not everybody wants to speak up and say what needs to be said. And so you've got a lot of daggers that have been thrown at you, but you duck good. <laughs> well, I, I, still, I have a lot of scars to prove it, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but thank you for taking the time because I know you guys have tried to get us to come to try to support and to come into the paper and get advertisement. We we just haven't developed enough res revenue to do right. that, but we're coming. We're going to get there soon. But, but, and so thank you for with, representing but, but us. Even without that, um, whether y'all can ever afford to ad advertise or not, whatever Black Westchester can do to support the team, you just let me know. Now, now financially it might not be a financial, but whatever else we can do, um, you know, get the word out, That's advertise, right. you know, 
put the stuff in there to promote, you know, the games and stuff, whatever. So thank tell you. Hello, I said what's up, God and uh, I know you gotta go. He said, AJ said, hey. <laughs> <laughs> All right, right, take care. So, so Marsh, I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm first off, I'm glad to meet you. I have never. I'm met you. so happy to meet you, also. Thank yeah, you for having and, me. And, and to hear when she was telling me about you, I was like, how do I not know her? You know, I mean, we we actually went to school. We went to school together. together. Right, right, right. How and and I mean? maybe we do. You know, it's, it's, AJ, it's been a long time. That's what yes, I say. Absolutely, people. absolutely. It's been a long time. And I tell people I'm a little older and uh, yes, 100 yes. pounds heavier. So, yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I look nothing like I looked like in school. I was 153 pounds in school. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, all yeah, oh, the days. The yeah, days. I'm, I'm yes. close to double that. Like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so, yeah, I am not the first. Yeah, so, but, uh, but I'm glad to know you now. And, yes, um, yes, did. And um, I'm happy to hear about the work you're doing. And anything else you want to tell, you know, um, that I didn't ask you that you want to talk about? Well, so, just women's, women's basketball. I mean, I got a whole mix, I got a whole hour left. So, whatever you want to talk about, women's basketball or what you you're know, doing. Just, just to share that, um, you know, the WABA is, we're we're a women's pro league, but we're community-based, right? Yes. So it's important, like the Shamrocks, to be able to have the community. And, and this is the support that anyone can have, is to just to come out and support the games, right? The entry is, is nominal. You right. know, I know um, social media is, carries um, your fan base. So share about the team, you know, repost something that the team posts, let people know there's a game happening, support the players. Um, these young ladies are still, most of them still chasing their dreams. And um, even from this year's team, I believe there's been at least three players that have gone overseas. Mm -hmm. And we think that's, that's, that's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing the Shamrocks are doing and that's league wide. Um, we're in the community as Tree shared with you that um, the Shamrocks will be doing community events. So we want, we want you know, especially young women, right? To see that there are opportunities, even if you don't make it to the WNBA, right? It's not over um, statistically. And I won't go too deep into it um, from a, the perspective of, of education. Um, probably 95% of the female athletes that go to college graduate, right? Um, they don't look forward, they, you know, they don't, they don't have the opportunity to look forward to multi-million dollar contracts when they leave school, um, but they leave with a degree. Um, if they haven't played at a top name school, as we said, there's only 12 WNBA teams. There are so many, there's just limited opportunities and we are looking to fill that gap. Um, not as a competitor to the WNBA because we want our players, right, to get an opportunity to move up to the WNBA. Um, so like anything, it's exposure. So share about the league wherever you, wherever you are. It's the WNBA. It's that simple. And then the teams that are around the country would love the support. So, so let me ask you a question. So do you think the W, the, the WNBA can ever be to the WNBA, yes. the ABA was to the NBA, because the NBA was only in major cities. You know, your New York, your Chicago, right, right, you know, right. and 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 it was like all those secondary markets. That yeah. was the that was the AB the ABA. Absolutely, you know what I'm saying? and then you know, still currently, and 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 then eventually the NBA realized that they wanted to expand and they wanted to expand into those markets, and yes. that's when the deal came together. Yes, so yes. it would be great to see. Um, you know, on a on that level, like you know, ABA games in second, you know, market cities like like that, and build up. I don't know if that's as a possibility or right, just right, you know, just, right. That would be incredible. It would. I mean, and the thing is, you know, um, it it is a shame that um, people don't know that the the ABA has been back for well over twenty years. Yeah, um, so I just learned that tonight. I really, really yes, and you know, there are. There are teams across the nation. Um, in, our, in our area, I happen to be in New Jersey. There's New Jersey teams. There's New York teams right in New York. Wow. Um, through upstate New York, mm -hmm. um, through Connecticut. There, there, are, there are, as I mentioned, over 150 teams nationwide. 
So these teams, as you mentioned, are playing in those, uh, let's just say, some smaller markets, right? Because right, the NBA right. are major markets. Right. Um, and, that, and it's the same concept of community-based, right? We're playing and we're looking for players that played, you know, um, in high school for their local team, went to college, right? Um, they're still chasing their dreams and they have somewhere to play. You know, at 22 years old, um, quite honestly, as an athlete, you haven't even really figured it out yet because you were you went from high school to playing in a college system, right? So you haven't really even peaked athletically, you know, for a few years because you want your your physical attributes to catch up to your mental, right? right, right, right. And that doesn't happen uh, until a few years later. So we're giving we're we're making sure that there's a platform for both men and women to continue to to really chase their dreams, right? Because athletically it's a small window and then and then you become right. a real adult and then <laughs> like you saw so, some of that I, I told i told the story um before you got on my daughter she's 33 now she'll be 33 october 21st um she, when she was in like sixth seventh grade in, in brentwood long island um she played on a basketball team and you know her team was undefeated so i once seeing that that's what she wanted to do Yes. I went and got her the movie Love and Basketball. We would watch it. And I Love showed him. her, I showed her how hard, even though how good she should not lay those character was, how hard she had to work to excel. Like talent is not enough to get you there. And then the WNBA just started. So I had a friend who did PR because I used to write for uh uh, the source, the vibe, the village voice, you know, and all that. So I knew all the PR okay, people. Right, right. So he came and gave her all kinds of um, you know jerseys and stuff and, and 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 gave us tickets to the games and she i got some of the players i was talking to the player i got some of the players to talk to her and encourage her because i wanted to encourage that's what she yes. wanted to do the next yes. year her, her mother introduced her to fake nails and basketball was gone so <laughs> i don't know all that work was for nothing but but but, but but you know what i'm saying but we you know we would go to the games and we would encourage and you know, yes, we have to encourage our our our, our, our youth when whatever it is that they want to do. Absolutely, and and and, Absolutely. and and love and basketball showed that story of what you told before the W because it was like just before the WNBA and I guess the beginning of WNBA for the in the movie. So they yes. had to all go overseas, and if, if, if they were lucky, you know what I'm saying. And yes, and, you know, yeah. Shanae. Should not let them couldn't play over. She's trying to work as a in a bank, you know, because she got to do something for for a right. living. And you know what I'm saying? She's miserable, can't walk in heels, and you know what I'm saying. And eventually, because overseas is not for everyone, AJ. You yeah. know, yeah. male and female, it's just not for everyone. Um, right. So here's another opportunity where you don't have to go overseas. Um, that we're just trying to, you know, provide that platform uh, for for more opportunity. And and for our young for our, our young sisters, you know, in a city like Mount Vernon, one of the things when we were younger, okay, so when we were younger, we had multiple boys clubs, we had multiple YMCA's, yes. we had yes. uh, we had movie theaters, we had the the, the yes. skating rink on McQuestion Parkway. That's right. That's you know right. What I mean? Every church, major church, had their youth ministry, and we went to Yankee games and do right, ranches right. and stuff with the Grace Baptist and all that. That's true. There were multiple things for us to do, and I say. Even with all those multiple things, I still tried every way I could to mess it up. You know what I mean? So you know what I'm I, I tried. I really tried. You know, but but now they don't have all of that. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. so the team, even though you know y'all can't save all the young sisters out there, that's a blessing for some of the sisters yes. to be involved. And, yes. and 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 Patrice talked about how. You know, she had she was angry and she'd take out her anger on the basketball court. Low absolutely old shared in his book. And when we did the conversation with the book, basketball saved his life back then. You know what I'm saying? And you know, like, you know, we need but, it, but it's not just basketball. We need, you know, we got kids that are more interested in soccer or you know what I'm saying? Good thing that Moral Fields open now. We got the skate park thing. Yeah, kids, yeah. A lot of our kids wasn't a lot of us skating. A lot of these right, young right, kids skating, right, doing right. things we wasn't doing and we we have to provide these things and that one thing is going to help all kids you know i agree i agree and absolutely so, so anybody who's doing access, anything right it's access right. anything anybody who's doing anything for our young people i just 
applaud them. You know, and, and I yeah. say this to, to everybody listening. We need more things. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is Absolutely. what you do. Y'all play ball. This is what y'all do. Other right. people do other things and they can do other things and create other programs for these, for the, our young brothers and sisters out there. Cause, and I said, the other thing I was, um, Patrice was talking about, you know, um, back in the day with Columbine or whatever, you know, um, and, and, and after the thing with Shamoya, she was, she's a, uh, She's a social worker, so she was able to help right. what, what I call help the kids unpack yeah. the situation. Yeah. And 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 now we don't even have that either, which led to you know we had uh we had several incidences, including a drive-by shooting, another incident, another incident, and then yes. an uh, incident that spilled out to the seats the streets where um the young lady, the ch young cheerleader, got killed. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Right. And it's like right. we're not giving these kids a chance to unpack the traumatic incidences that they're dealing with and they're carrying this. And someone said, um, they're like PTSD, they're like soldiers coming home from war. I said, yeah, but the difference is the soldiers come home from the war. That's true. They live in the war zone. They That's go to true. school in the war zone. They go to store in the war zone. Like they That's never so escaped true. the war zone. Like, you know what I'm saying? So imagine if you right. didn't come home and you had to live in the war zone forever. Like I agree. that's, what, I, I that's agree. what our kids are dealing with. So. I know. I think we need to, and we need to deal with the the mental health issue aspect of it as well. So I, I'm real passionate about that. So anytime I can. No, talk. I I totally understand, and I agree 100. percent But you know, AJ, what you're doing also, you know, your platform, you know, in in showing um, that you can look. Everyone's not going to be an athlete. Everyone's not interested in it. Right. But you know, maybe you can become, you know, an AJ Woodson. You know, right, and right. and if you you've written for publications, you're you're hosting your own show, you right. know, in in Black Westchester. So there, it's access, right? And right. I, I wholeheartedly believe that we need to see what we want to become. Absolutely, absolutely. So I, I, it is. I was, I was married. Um, I'm divorced now, but I was living in Georgia, and at the time when Obama was in office my two stepdaughters were around the same ages of his daughters. And I was like, you get to see something for the first time that I've never yes. seen in my life. Yes. You know, yes. Girls that look like you in the White House. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? You know, I didn't look like Carter's daughter or Ray and Bush. I didn't look like none of right. them kids. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it I, matters, I, doesn't it? It really does kids look like me. I said, you got to see something we never got to see in our life. We heard we could be the first president or something. We never right. saw that. Right. And um, right. we had this, we had a young lady this year. Um, she's going. To, she's a senior now in Quinnipiac University. She she um, interned for us. Her name is Olivia. Uh, sister, excellent, um, dedicated sister. Did a great job for us. And I was gr I was glad to pour whatever I could pour into her. I think that this young lady is going to go on to do amazing things. The work she did for us over the summer was amazing. You know, she covered some Mount Vernon stories and Mount Vernon. Right, right, right. You know, I, I try to use what we do to exactly. um, influence right. the next generation of truth tellers, whether they be advocates, av activists, journalists, wh whatever it is they be, you know, whatever we can do to um, pour into them. Even so, if it's even if it's one and one, you know, one right. shares it with another, and right, right, you know, right. It, it just um, and it only takes one. It it really it only takes one, and I and I think that um, being able to say, you know, watching AJ Woodson, you know, or a Patrice, you know, Wallace right. Moore, or it it is it is really it's vitally important that even, they even, see even female seeing um. You know, women like Sean Patterson Howard, Mal Vernon, uh, uh, Vivian McKenzie and Peak Skill. Yes. Yes. You know, females leading cities. Like, you know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Like, to see that Absolutely. black females that look like them, you know. Right, right. Young sisters right. like, oh, wow. You know, it's always been men all this time. You know. It's you know, true. It's yeah, true. So, so. Represent, that, that definitely matters. So tell me well, anything I didn't ask you. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. What was your no, answer? please. Anything I didn't ask you, I want to, I want to give you time to talk about. No, you I appreciate you giving me an opportunity to to share. You know, not only um, you know, and do I have the teams and and I I uh, run the league. It is a passion of mine. Yes, um, yes. I always say it's bigger than basketball, right? It's more mm -hmm. than a game. Um, I have lifelong friendships from this game that mm -hmm. has turned into um, my passion and my business. Mm -hmm. And I get to meet new people like yourself, even though we went to school together and didn't know. Right, right, right. right. 
<laughs> I'm sure we talk offline, we're gonna find out we got some friends or something. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. So no, I appreciate uh uh this opportunity to come on and, and share a little bit about both leagues and um just ask people the best way to support is to share, um, go to a game, reach out to a team, support a player that you hear about. Um, mm -hmm. you know, if it, if anyone's interested in learning more about um uh, the WABA on a larger scale, um, again, they can log on to womensaba.com, contact us, um, and we look forward to, you know, another opportunity to come on and, and chat a little further with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'd love to, um, especially um, if they won the championship, I want y'all to come back. Oh, my goodness. I wouldn't want y'all to come, come back with the girls. Be but Absolutely even, if, amazing. even if they don't, you know, going into next season, I want to help promote the season. So if you you know, right. come back with the girls and, okay. you know what I'm saying, talk about the game and they see some of the women, some of the girls, you know, sometimes Absolutely. you have to see people like you don't have to see them and like, oh, man, I'm going to go see that person. You know what I'm saying? You just, you know, oh, so let me let me just drop a little. Um, uh, this is something Patrice doesn't even know. Okay. Um, well, well. Malverde Shamrocks have three all-stars, so they're going to participate in the all-star game anyway, so they'll have plenty to share uh, coming back, so hopefully you'll have them on. Oh, absolutely. And then, just, and then there are some awards that will be given out um, at our awards banquet, and uh, there might be some wonderful surprises for the Malverde Shamrocks. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. Yes, please, please keep me. My email address for you to have is blackwestchester at gmail.com. Oh, that's simple. Um, Black yes, that, you, that, that's email. why. That's that's All why. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Please hit me, and I'll give you my cell number and everything, and you'll know how to contact me. And sounds good. We will we'll, we'll promote it, you know. And I, and we have to uplift. I don't get a chance to because I deal with a lot of politics and a lot of corruption and a lot of racism yes. and all that stuff. Yes. Yes. But the um, I, I was with the, the I'm doing a feature on the young man from the game yesterday. He he he's a senior. He scored the first touchdown. I think oh, he scored two touchdowns. That's wonderful. And this is his he he not only did he score the first touchdown in the first game since 2007, this is his first game because the Razorbacks used to play in Memorial Field, but the Razorback the field was closed when he was a Razorback. So he was playing in Brush Park. So this is oh, his first that. time. And I'm just want to do a thing. And and and, yeah. and not to, not that, you know, to highlight him over the other team, but I can only do, you know, little yes, things. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. talking about the game. Everybody's talking about Memorial Field. I wanted to do something different, and I'm, I, I picked him, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight him next. That's week. beautiful. That's you beautiful. know what I'm saying. And it's just, like, yo, you know, and, and we need to we need to spotlight our youth. We 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 condemn them when they do bad. We always talk about they're out of control and they're no good, but you have to celebrate them when they do good. That's right. That's and, right. And, That's and, right. And, you know, if you don't, you know, if you only come to me, I mean, you know, tell me I don't do this and I don't do that. And you only say negative things about me. I'm not really going to hear you when you yeah, say right, well, right. I'm not going to hear you, you know. And then sometimes you begin to believe it if that's all you hear. Oh, so that's, yes, that's, that that's Positive that's, reinforcement is right, so important. Right, so. Right, right, right. But I thank you so much for having me and, and letting me share. Oh, um, absolutely. And, I look um, forward to speaking with you again. Uh, absolutely, and and keep me updated on them through All Stars. Maybe we'll do something with them too. Maybe Sounds I have to spot it. When Sounds is the All Star good. game? When is their All Star? Um, well, the 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 WABA Finals weekend is this upcoming weekend, September thirtieth uh -huh. through October second. Uh -huh. um, we bring together, you know, the final four teams. Uh -huh. um, then we have a championship and the awards banquet. Um, I alluded to, right. and then Sunday the second is the All Star game where the best players throughout the league this season. Second of what, November? So, uh, no, October. October. It all okay. happens in the same weekend. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's our finals weekend. Oh, okay, next weekend. Yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I would love to definitely have the All-Stars on, um, and definitely. And if the team wins, I definitely want the team on. Oh, yeah. that would be amazing, yes. But win or lose, though, I want to start next season off going into the season with them on, talking Sounds about the great. team, why people should support the team. And, right. and, and I, I ask this – Mayor Sean Patterson Howard also made a comment, and I asked this question. Let me put her comment up. Um, uh, yes, we need to raise some money for the Shamrocks. They have some traveling to do. If someone wants to do that, that is listening now or will watch this later on BlackWestChester.com, on YouTube, on Facebook, or wherever, how do they go about doing that? Well, <clears throat> Patrice gave her cash app earlier. Right. 
Right. Um, but you know, quite honestly, you know, I can I can put give you um, my information uh, to the league, and we'll make sure that she gets it. It's okay. at Cash App. It's dollar sign, and it's funding payment. Funding with a G. Yes. Funding. Oh, you, know, you, you know, you don't have to ask these questions these days because you know like, <laughs> black people yes. don't like the, black people don't like the G at the end sometimes. <laughs> and they can just put in the memo, Shamrocks, simply okay. Shamrocks, and okay. we'll make sure that the Shamrocks get it. And that would be great. Can you see the screen? Is that it? Yes, it's there, okay. and that's perfect. And okay. that would be wonderful for them because they're one of the teams that's traveling the furthest. Just right. so you know, the Final Four teams come from different regions. Right, so the right, girls right. get to travel too. So what an experience. This is just going to be a wonderful weekend, wonderful uh, experience for uh, the players um, who have not had this opportunity and uh, the support is needed. Uh, and again, if they can send their donations to dollar sign funding payment and put in the memo, Shamrocks will make sure that the Shamrocks receive 100% of the donations. And I got to get Patrice from hers again. I think she said P W more more sixty three. Yeah, um, something like that. And but if I, that I, is it, they can just send it there. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll I'll double check that with her so I can write it yes. down. And um, so I don't want to make nobody money get don't get where it has to get to. So exactly, you know. exactly. Yes. But so so um, thank you for your time. Thank you for everything you do. I am looking forward to working with you in any capacity Absolutely. that I can. Understood. Yes. Um, yes. You know, any any time, you know, you want to come on and speak about some issues about basketball or just, you know, whatever, you know. Right, right. You got something, please contact Because basketball me. is life. It teaches well, life lessons. Yes. That's, it has taught us life, literally life, life lessons. So Oh, the traveling part I wanted to I wanted to touch upon before you left. So what a lot of people don't know, well, a lot of my audience knows now because they didn't know. I used to be a rapper back in the days too. Okay, so, okay. So. Oh, you multi-talented. So hip hop gave me the opportunity to see the world yes. in a way that I never would have before and see places that even if I had money, I wouldn't have never have gone to. Like I saw the Berlin Wall before it fell. Like if I had money, I was right. never going to Berlin to, for right. a vacation. Right. Like I would, would make me go out there. Right. I got to see like the Berlin Wall, like um, just months before it fell too, you know, and 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 different things like that. And it it gives you a different perspective than when you don't leave your city or your area just and that's all you ever see. So traveling is so important to go to different cities. And when I got to go to different cities around the U.S., I realized. You know, a lot of us got the same issues and these same community. You know, it's like I agree. Oh, it's not. I agree. It's not just us here in Mount Vernon. It's a lot of Black communities dealing with this. And they got Absolutely. a lot of this, and they have may have more or less of it, but a different variations of it. Right. But, you know, right. We, we, we're not really that different. And you get, but you get to see that though. That's true. You you're know, so, right. So, That's you why to, it's so important. Yeah, um, you get to talk to people from other places, like Michigan. Yes, like one of the yes. teams are from Michigan, right? One of the teams they're going to deal with come from Michigan. Team from right? Michigan, St. Louis. Right. Um, Places you know, they heard of on and seen on TV, but they never spoke. You know, right. they never been to. That's right. Yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, so absolutely. I, I, I applaud that. And that is very important. So, and relationships, you know, really, relationships, relationships are right. everything, you know, absolutely. to be able to, you know, meet and enjoy um, those, you know, competitors on the court, off the court, they become friends. Right. So, you have friends around the country and, you never know uh, when you need to call on someone for different reasons, right? right. Even, at, even for a visit, even an experience. So, um, they may I, grow up to be um, teammates or competitors in the uh, and in, in, in overseas or absolutely in the WNBA. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Like you never there you know. Go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, AJ. I appreciate it. I look know. forward to to being yes. on again. Uh, absolutely. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Okay. Bye bye. -bye.